Hi, today we're going to show you how you can construct a customer social graph on the Tasty Bytes dataset using the Snowflake native app from Relational AI. Let's get started. For our community detection algorithm, we first are going to need some data. Let's use the Tasty Bytes dataset available in Snowflake. There's a nice streamlit app that walks through how to set it up. In order to work with this data, we're going to paste in a command that creates a harmonized view. This is going to create a table called loyalty orders. We're also going to filter out data where the truck ID or the customer ID is null. And finally, we'll filter it down to just the California region, giving us a nice table to work with. In order to use the relational AI native app, it first has to be added to your Snowflake environment. First, go to the App Store and find relational AI. Select Get, fill out the information, and save. Then select a warehouse and click to install. Once it's installed, you'll be brought to a Streamlit app view. Select your warehouse and you'll be linked to our documentation on how to further set up additional resources. Some additional resource setup may be necessary, like creating compute pools so that your data science team can easily create relational AI engines on Snowflake. All right, so now we're gonna create a Conda environment We'll call it RAI Communities. Uh, once we create that environment, we will activate it. And then once it's activated, we'll install JupyterLab as well as the Relational AI Python package. All right, now let's use the environment we just created. The first thing we'll do is call the command line tool RAI init. This will walk us through the setup to configure the Snowflake account you are using, as well as set up the relational AI resources that you will need. As you can see, we enter the username, password, Snowflake account information, including the role. Then you select the relational AI app and create a new engine. Pick the size according to your compute needs. Once the engine is created, you are ready to run the Python notebook. Okay, now we just need to open up our Jupyter Lab or our Jupyter Notebook so that we can access the Community Detection Notebook. First, we import the Python libraries we will need, including the Relational AI Python package. The Relational AI package is a declarative query builder that lets you model relationships between entities in your data cloud and extract valuable insights. In a model, entities are represented as objects rather than rows in a table and fields are represented as object properties. The properties of objects and relationships between them are stored in the model as rules. Let's go ahead and create a model to see what it's like. We need to connect our model to Snowflake and to tell the relational AI package that we want to use the data from the loyalty orders California table. Remember, we previously created this table and it holds data about our customer orders for all of California. We can then run a simple aggregation query to check that everything is set up properly. Note the use of a context manager, the with statement, that allows us to write the relational AI code. Although the first cell feels like Python, it's actually the relational AI package, our declarative query builder. So some things are different and we will point them out as they come up. Okay, we've confirmed we can count the number of records coming in from the table and we use the relational AI package to calculate this for us. Let's continue by creating a number of types. You can think of types as representing real world entities. That is to say, things that you want to use in your model. For example, in this demo, we're talking about customers who go to eat at food trucks. So in this case, we'll define types for customers, trucks, transactions, also communities and relevant connections. What we're essentially doing here is creating a conceptual model of our business and grounding it with our data. And you can always go back and add types as you find the need for new concepts in your model. Okay, now that we've created some types, Let's define what a customer is in our model by using the data from the table. We first open a new context manager to inform the model that we're writing a rule. When we say r equals record, we're actually performing a selection to retrieve all the records from the table. On the next line, we are filling data into our customer type by saying, let there be an attribute for each customer called customer ID. Populate the value of that from each record, which is just a row in the table from the column customer ID. So after the execution of the rule, we have told our model how to create and populate customers. 
Customers are entities which have one attribute called customer ID. So if we want to then select our customers by customer ID, we'll have a way to do so. Note that nothing stops us from adding additional information about a customer, such as their name or anything else. The next section of the cell runs a query. The first line says, retrieve all the customers in the data set. And the last line says to run the query and store the result in a variable called result. We could accomplish this task using Snowflake as well. However, in this scenario, we're accessing the data from the perspective of the conceptual model. We should see the output of the cell telling us exactly how many customers are in this data set. And we see we have around 10,000 customers. Let's do the same thing, but for trucks. We populate the truck type with truck IDs taken from the table, then query to get the total number of trucks. Note that we can now query our data by talking about trucks and customers, so we have a natural language way to talk about querying this data set. And it looks like we have 15 food trucks in this data set. Now, we are going to pull out the relevant data for the records, and we will store that information in a new type we will call a transaction. A transaction represents a customer's order at a given point in time. Note the kind of information we are keeping here. Now that we have transactions to work with, we are going to connect one transaction to another if they were placed at the same truck within 20 minutes of each other. We select that data and then set a new attribute called connected to store this information. Now, because transactions also have customers, we have essentially created a link between customers at the same time. Let's query this information to see how many connections, also known as edges, between two customers we have in our graph. So we converted our individual orders by different customers into a very large and very complex graph. Think about how many spurious connections you will have. There will be an edge connecting you to every customer who just happened to order 20 minutes before you or 20 minutes after you. The next step is to filter out those spurious connections to find people who regularly eat together. Think about it. The odds of you ordering within the same 20 minutes of your friends or coworkers is very high, especially if you went to eat together. But the same exact person that you do not know ordering in front of you at the coffee shop isn't likely to happen more than once. Let's look at this rule. We first say get all the transactions. Then we count up the number of transactions between pairs of customers. The next line is actually a filter. It is one of those places where the Python looks different until you remember you are within the relational AI context manager and you are writing relational AI code. Total connections was defined above. So this next line is actually saying only keep transactions where the customers have eaten within the same 20 minutes of each other more than once. So we are essentially filtering out all of those spurious connections. Finally, this last line says to add them to the relevant connection object. We store the customers and the total number of times they've eaten in proximity of one another, according to our definition. Now we get a new count of the number of edges that remain after filtering. Having the graph data ready, let's see what relational AI enables us to do. With community detection, we can easily find groups of customers who share similar eating habits. This helps us create targeted campaigns, personalize recommendations, and engage with influencers which all leads to better customer engagement and business growth. Relational AI offers a variety of community detection algorithms. For this example, we'll run Luven. We also offer the InfoMap community detect detection algorithm and a number of others. First, we use the relational AI object graph and attach our model to it. We tell it to treat this graph as undirected, which means that if you had lunch around the same time as me, then I also had lunch around the same time as you. Next, we write a rule that says take all of the relevant connections and use those to create edges in a graph object. This will implicitly also add nodes. We add the number of total connections as the weight attribute. In relational AI, we support operations over both weighted and unweighted graphs. Once we have added our edges and nodes, we are ready to run community detection over the graph. We run Leuven on the customers and the results of the calculation is an assignment of every node to the community. We add that additional information to the customer nodes in the graph. The next cell uses the fetch method of a graph object. Note that calculations in relational AI happen when we ask to retrieve the results. So this cell here triggers the calculation of the communities. 
Once it is done, this pulls the data back as a dictionary that describes the graph. Once we have the data, we can create colors for each community to allow us to better visualize them. Here, we can finally plot our customer social network graph. Every subgraph indicates a separate social network. Here, we see coworkers who lunch together, friends who meet up for dinner, and other close knit social groups. Now, suppose we are interested in a particular customer, or we want to see how big the social group is of that particular customer. We can search through the data to get the community ID that was assigned to that customer, and then we can recolor the graph. Zooming in, it is now very easy to find this particular group. With this view, we can easily see which customers are in the same social group. Well, that is all we're going to show you today. This is one small example of how a customer social graph can provide valuable insights for your business. Imagine all the ways you could use this to augment your data and grow your business. We've shown you today how to use our relational AI package, which runs as a Snowflake native app, and how to use Jupyter Notebooks to create a conceptual model of your business. We projected a graph from this model and ran advanced graph algorithms over this data. It's important to highlight that once you calculate the community IDs, you're just a single cell away from sending that result back to Snowflake as a new column in a table. That way, everyone in your group can get access to the results of your graph analysis. Thank you, and we hope you enjoyed this example of what relational AI's Snowflake native app can do for you.